Hey there, this video is gonna be a deep dive into whether or not you should be purchasing RF lenses or EF lenses and which ones will be better for you. So I guess this question asks a lot because a lot of people when they're getting into the Canon system, they're trying to find some more inexpensive lenses. And at the time of recording this, Canon is still not allowing third-party manufacturers to make RF lenses with autofocus. So the first thing people will probably think of is trying to buy older lenses like EF lenses. So that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. And this is also gonna to apply to if you're owning cameras that are not Canon cameras because I have a lot of adapters over here. We're gonna talk about all those because you can use EF lenses on lots of different cameras. So of course, one of the biggest things is gonna be the cost of the older lenses. And the other thing I wanna talk about is the availability. So EF lenses have been out for a long time, for decades. The EF mount and EF mount cameras have been around and been a standard and a staple for many photographers and videographers and filmmakers for a long time. So there are a lot of lenses out there and I'm a big proponent of buying used gear, but just be careful when buying used gear. But in my opinion, the EF mount is the most versatile lens mount out there. There is an argument for PL as well for cinematographers and videographers, but in most people's situations, uh, EF is gonna be the most versatile lens mount out there. And as I said, you can use this on not just Canon cameras, but other mirrorless cameras as well, and I'll talk about that. So when we're talking about photography lenses, I generally, I generally recommend sticking to two different kinds. I really like the Canon EF L, lenses and also the Sigma Art EF lenses. And we'll talk about the differences between those two in this video. So those are kind of the two photography lenses I would recommend. There are also lots of cinema and vintage lenses out there that are either EF mount or can be converted to EF. So let me show you a couple examples. So I have uh, one of my Leica R lenses here. This is the 28 mil. And on the back here, this is an R mount lens because of course it's for Leica R, but this has been hard mounted to EF. So this is a, a mount, an adapter from Simod. A lot of times you can hard mount them or get adapters. And now this is an EF lens, so this can get mounted on pretty much any camera. And similarly, I have a contact Zeiss lens here, also some great lenses. This is a CY mount, but with a very inexpensive adapter here, you can put this adapter on here and this becomes now an EF mount and you can mount this to EF cameras and then also adapt it to other uh, mirrorless camera. So lots of different options for both photography lenses, also cinema and vintage lenses. Well, if you own a camera that has an EF lens mount, then you're probably not watching this video and you can't even consider using RF lenses. But if you have a Canon camera with an RF mount or another mirrorless camera, you are definitely gonna be using adapters. So <laughs> you gotta talk about the adapter game here because that is a big part of using EF lenses. So first of all, let's talk about using Canon cameras. I have a bunch of adapters here to talk about and then I'll talk about using them with other systems because that's one of the huge benefits of EF lenses. You can use them on lots of different camera systems and I'll talk about that too. So the first one I wanna talk about is going to be the basic pass-through adapter. And this is probably one that every Canon user probably owns. This is goes from mounting an EF lens onto an RF mount. This is what I call the pass-through adapter. It's because there are no optics in here. It just passes the image right through without affecting it. So this will not affect your image quality. It also has electronic connections on here. So autofocus and all that stuff should work. And what I wanna point out about this is that the, the reason why it's so thick here, there's a distance between the lens and where it mounts to the camera is the fact that EF lenses were designed to use on DSLRs and DSLRs had mirror boxes in there. Now, the modern mirrorless cameras don't have that, so the flange distance or the distance between the lens and the sensor is smaller. So this basically accounts for that and makes up for that distance that you would need in an EF lens so that it focuses correctly. So this adapter is great because you can use it in a lot of different situations, but because of that extra distance, it allows us to have a lot of other filters that are really, really handy. So let's talk about some of those filters. So this one is fantastic. This is one of my favorites besides the, the regular pass-through one. Again, this is going from EF to RF, and this one is made by Canon. This is the drop-in filter adapter, and you can buy this with either a CPL, a circular polarizer, or with the variable ND. So you can mount lots of different filters in here. And just like I said, because you have that extra distance that you would usually have in the DSLR system, you allowed to use filters and stuff like that in an adapter like this. So right now, what I have in here is the breakthrough variable ND filter. And so this I've reviewed and compared against the other common variable ND filters. And I will leave a video for that link down below. But as you can see, you can pop this in and out. So this is a variable ND. So I can turn the dial here and make it lighter and darker. 
and there's lots of other filters you can slide in there. Of course, you can use the Canon one, but I have a couple other filters from Breakthrough. So this is the night sky filter. So you could pop that in too. And you could also use, use something like a circular polarizer. So a CPL. So lots of different options that you can put inside of these kinds of filter adapters. They're fantastic. And I think one of the best parts about these kinds of adapters is that when you mount this on your camera, you pretty much always have whatever filter you have on there. So if you like, let's say don't have a uh, built-in ND filter, then you can pop this on your camera and then any lens that you put on the front will have an ND filter. So that's super handy. You don't have to worry about screwing on filters and having different uh, size filters and step up rings and matte boxes and, and all that kind of stuff. You can just put this on your camera and then you can pop things on and off. Now, these also come with clear adapters so that you don't have to change the lens mount out, but I don't like to putting extra glass in line with my image. So what I usually do is if I don't need ND, I'll just swap this out for the pass-through adapter and just leave the ND filter in there. So this is one of the best things to buy. I definitely recommend that. Uh, a cheaper option for this is the, like I said in that other video, I did uh, compare this. There's one from Mikey here, and this is very, very similar. Uh, this one is a lot cheaper. Uh, your Performance might vary a little bit with the uh, lens talking through to the camera and stuff like that, but it does work really well, and especially with manual focus lenses. But I've made a few videos, and everything, all the related videos I'll put down below for you to check out. Now, one of the other really popular filter, or sorry, adapters is gonna be this guy here. This is the Canon 0.71X Focal Reducer, also known as a Speed Booster. Speed Booster is actually a term that is owned by Metabones. It's one of their products, but everyone just calls them Speed Boosters. Uh, this is a super handy tool to have. I've made several videos about this. Basically what this does is you can mount a full frame EF lens on here and put this on a Super 35 RF mount camera. So this is really handy with cameras like the C70, the R7, uh, a Red Komodo or Komodo X. Fantastic tool. What this does is it gives you a wider field of view. So you multiply the crop factor by 0.71 to get your new crop factor. And you also get an extra stop of light in terms of exposure. So really handy if you are in darker environments or you just need a really wide field of view. This can be really handy. There's also Metabones makes one, like I said, and Viltrox also makes one, although it's been taken on off the shelves. So I don't know if it's available still, but there are a few different options for that. So these are the main adapters that I would probably recommend if you are looking to adapt EF lenses onto a Canon camera. Okay, one of the big benefits of using EF lenses is that you can adapt them to other camera systems like I mentioned. So let's talk about some of those adapters and you can see why I invest in EF lenses because I can adapt them on all different cameras. And if you follow this channel at all, you know I shoot on like everything. So let's talk about Sony. So the adapter that I recommend is the Sigma MC11. So this guy right here. So this will adapt an EF lens to an E-mount camera. And this does have electronics on it too. So this works really well in combination with the Sigma lenses. And I will talk about that later, but I've used this to mount uh, lots of different lenses like the Sigma 18 to 35, uh, the Sigma 28 here, the Sigma 24 to 70 EF lens. I've used a lot of Sigma lenses to adapt on Sony cameras and they work pretty much natively. So that's really cool. Another adapter I have here is the Mikey adapter. And this one is very similar to the one I showed you before with the EF to RF adapter. This one is a drop-in filter adapter that goes from EF to E. This one, the autofocus does not work nearly as well. And there's some modes where it actually defaults to using uh, contrast detect autofocus instead of phase detect autofocus. But I bought this for using manual focus lenses. So if you do need something like that, it is here. But this one, the autofocus does not work nearly as well as the, the Sigma version. So that's kind of what I would recommend for Sony. I have a couple other adapters here because like I said, I like to shoot on lots of different cameras. The next one is gonna be the Sigma MC21. And this one will go on to L mount. So that's awesome. Now it is a little bit tricky because when you're looking at the Sigma MC21, there is an, there's two versions of the MC21. There is the L mount version and the Sigma SA version. So I definitely recommend you pay attention to that. And if you need this, this works fantastic. I've used the Sigma lens I mentioned before on like the S52 or S52X and it works really, really well, including autofocus. And lastly, you can convert EF lenses to um, Fuji X mount and that works fantastically well too. Sigma, as far as I know, does not make an adapter, but there's a company called Fringer or Fringer. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. They make several adapters. This one I have is the EF to FX Mark II. They also make one with a control ring and they also uh, make a Mark III version. I have the Mark II without the control ring because it was a little bit cheaper and a little bit more simple. 
but I've used like the, the Sigma 18 to 35 EF mount on my uh, XH2S and it works super, super well. So as you can see here with a few adapters, you can pretty much buy one lens and then any camera that you get, you could probably adapt it to. So I just wanna show you some of these different adapters and my recommendations for them. All right, so this all sounds well and good. It sounds like you can use EF lenses on every camera. So of course, there are gonna be some issues. So let's talk about some issues that might come up. Now, first of all, what I'd recommend is if you're shooting on Canon, I would recommend the latest releases of the Canon EF lenses. And I definitely recommend the L series lenses. So sort of the lenses that came out in the 2010s, of course, there were lenses that came out before that, but I'd recommend some of the more modern ones uh, that came out before they switched over to mirrorless. I think they're a lot more reliable in terms of autofocus and stabilization and those sorts of things. Also, the Sigma art lenses work really, really well in my experience. So for example, the Sigma 18 to 35, which is what I'm shooting on right now, I've used it really, it does a great job on cameras like the Canon C70, the Canon R7. Uh, you can use it in crop mode on cameras like the R5C, so stuff like that, because it's a crop sensor lens. Now, the art lenses are fantastic. And so I really like the Sigma Art Primes, also the Sigma Art 24 to 70, and, and those sorts of lenses. So I probably stick to either some of the newer uh, Canon L series lenses and also the Sigma arts, those sort of work the best. I've also heard other people report back to me that they were trying to adapt older EF lenses or maybe some of the less expensive and older non L series lenses and they don't perform perfectly on RF cameras, especially like the stabilization, autofocus and stuff like that. In terms of autofocus performance, this is gonna vary a lot depending on like which lens you use. And like I said, if you stick to using some of the later releases of the L series lenses from Canon or the Sigma arts, they work better. Now, what I've noticed though, is when you're using those kinds of lenses, they work pretty much the same as they would have been working on an EF mount Canon camera. As long as you're using the, the Canon pass-through adapter, they work pretty much the same as they would on an EF mount camera. Now, if you're looking for stellar autofocus performance and the best that Canon cameras offer, I probably recommend shooting on RF lenses because that's you know the super modern answer to all that. The other thing is with these DSLR lenses is they tend to be really noisy when they autofocus, so you have to keep that in mind too. Now, in terms of stabilization, uh, there's fewer lenses, I think, that have the stabilization in some of the older L-series lenses, but uh, there's mixed results with that too. So again, if you want like the best stabilization performance paired with some of the IBIS in the Canon RF mount cameras, again, I'd recommend using RF mount lenses. In terms of size and weight, this is gonna vary a lot depending on the lenses and you have to you know, compare them against each other. But remember, when you're using EF lenses, you also have to take into account the fact that you're using an adapter. That being said, you can't get every single lens in RF that is available in EF. For example, there is no RF 24 millimeter L-series lens or 35 millimeter L-series lens at the time of recording this, which you can get those in EF mount. So you can't always find the exact equivalents. So as I said, there is just a lot of availability when you start looking at all of the EF mount glass that are out there. So I know I did talk a little bit about using EF lenses on other cameras like Sony and Lumix and Fuji, but I wanna talk about using them on other systems and specifically like about using them on REDs. So for example, right now I'm shooting on my RED Komodo with the Sigma 18 to 35 EF mount with the EF to RF pass-through adapter. It's a really common uh, combination. And so what I wanna talk about here are in-camera corrections having to do with lens corrections. So nowadays when camera companies like Canon and Sony are designing their lenses that go right onto their bodies, then what they do is they often will design the lenses to be a little bit smaller, cheaper, and lighter because everybody wants that. And the result of that is there are some issues in terms of the lens, but because they make the lenses in the cameras, the cameras know what the issues are in the lens and they have automatic lens corrections built into the camera. Now you can sometimes turn these on or off, sometimes you can't. Uh, and if you're shooting JPEGs for photos or if you're shooting video, you won't even see this. But if you shoot raw photos and you go into your editing software, you can actually turn off the corrections. Or if you're shooting raw video, it won't allow you to use in-camera corrections and you'll see how the lenses, how, all the faults in the lenses and specifically about distortion, that's one of the big ones, that and the vignetting. So what I wanna say about this is that if you're taking a lens and you're putting on a camera that does not have in-camera corrections or can't do in-camera corrections for that lens, you're really relying on the actual optics of the lens. So for example, if I'm shooting on a RED, I would much prefer in a lot of situations to shoot on EF lenses because they were designed before 
the in-camera lens corrections were a thing. So a lot of the issues were sorted out optically in the lenses. And that's one of the reasons why, in my opinion, the Sigma art lenses are so big and heavy is because they're trying to do it optically. And so that is really important when you're putting it on cameras that can't do those in-camera corrections. So I think a big thing to discuss and consider if you're using Canon cameras is whether or not you should invest in Canon, L-series glass, or Sigma art lenses. And I have a couple things I wanna share with you about this. So first of all, if you're trying to put a set of lenses together, I'd probably recommend getting the Sigma lenses. In terms of the primes, the Sigma primes, like the 24, 35, 50, 85, they match really well to each other and they've actually turned those into cinema lenses. Now in Canon, if you're looking at primes, they were designed over a large period of time and so they don't always match each other. So if you look at the most recent uh, versions of all these lenses, like the 24, 24 millimeter 1.4 L Mark II, the 35 1.4 L Mark II, the 50 1.2 L, and the 85 1.4 L IS, all those lenses were kind of designed at different times and so they don't all quite match. But I think if you're trying to put a set together of lenses, they do match pretty well. And you know, the nice thing also if you're into zoom lenses is the 16 to 35 Mark III, the 24 to 70 Mark II, and the 70 to 200 2.8 Mark III do make a nice set. So if you're looking for lenses that kind of match really well in terms of primes between the Canon L series and the Sigma EF, I'd probably go for the Sigma lenses. I do want to mention one other thing about the Sigma primes because most people are very familiar with like the standard primes, like I mentioned, the 24, 35, 50, 85, 135. But there's a set of lenses that came out much later than those, and that were the 28, 40, and 105. And I kind of want to make a whole video about this because I don't think a lot of people know about them because they were big, heavy, and expensive and came out kind of at the end of the DSLR era. I have the 28, and it is a unbelievable lens. I use this lens all the time. I would really like to buy the 40. If you're interested in some lenses that are insanely good for the price, the 28, 40, and 105 are on another level, in my opinion, than the 24, 35, 50, and 85. So I just wanna mention that because I don't think a lot of people uh, talk about them. So I just wanna bring that up. All right, so with all the benefits of using EF lenses, being able to adapt them to different systems, use filters, and being cheaper, why would you wanna invest in RF lenses? Well, I do own a few RF lenses. I own the 15 to 35, the 24 to 70, and the 100 to 500. I love the 100 to 500, one of my favorite lenses ever. Uh, the reason you might wanna invest in RF lenses is you really do get the best performance in terms of autofocus, stabilization, image quality. Of course, those in-camera lens corrections, like I said, you'll get a very clean image right out of camera. And of course, no adapter. So you get a much simpler system and more compact in some ways. And you know, just personally, like either some days I just don't wanna use adapters. And I think there's a lot of people out there hate adapters as well. I totally get that and they wanna use um, you know, native lenses. And some of the RF lenses are really special. And I think there are a couple of RF lenses that are really unique that don't exist in other systems. And there are some of the reasons why some people stick with Canon. For example, the RF 20 to 70 F2, or the RF 100 to 300 f2.8, or the newest release, the RF 24 to 105 f2.8 power zoom. So some of those lenses are pretty unique, and I think Canon's gonna continue putting those out. And frankly, I'm a big zoom fan for a lot of my work, and the zoom lenses that I have are like really special to me. I really, really like them. So uh, the, the good thing about these RF L zooms, even though they are pretty pricey, they've actually been out for quite a while now. Some of these lenses are five, six years old, and you can get them a lot cheaper on the used market. So like I said, I'm a big fan of buying used lenses. Anyways, a uh, lot to consider. I don't think there's a wrong answer here, but I want to give you some things to help you with your decision. And if you have any questions, leave them down below. Of course, I have not tested out every single lens and compared it with every other lens out there, but uh, I have used a lot of these and there are, I've lately been trying to invest more in EF lenses uh, just because I'm using lots of different systems. So. Appreciate all of you watching. If you found value in this video, please hit the subscribe down below. It'd be greatly appreciated. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.